Hello and welcome to part two of option pricing and coding an option pricing model with Python. In this video, I'm going over two main topics, put option and the put call parity. An option as a recap is the right and not the obligation to buy or sell a certain underlying. This time we are considering a put option, that is the right to sell an asset for an agreed price K, in this example, 100 US dollar. This price is called the strike price. Now at any given time in the runtime of this option, you can buy this right, and this right has a price, which is called the option premium. That is simply the price of the option. Finally, on the expiry date, you can decide if you exercise the option, meaning you sell the underlying for the agreed price, so the strike price. In my example, the stock was rising and is at 120 US dollar on expiry. That would be an unfavorable outcome for the put option buyer because you have the right to sell an asset for the strike price, 100 US dollar, which is now worth 120 US dollar. So there is no way you would exercise this option. Let's take a look at the payoff of a put option. What you see on the horizontal or x-axis is a range of prices for the underlying so the stock. The assumption is the same as before. The strike price is 100 US dollar. Now, as long as the stock price is below 100 US dollar, this option would make sense to exercise simply because you would want to sell something for 100 US dollar, which is worth less in the market. So as long as the stock price is below the strike, you would benefit having this option. As explained in the previous part, this option would be considered as in the money. Now, the next area, this dotted red line, which is the underlying is exactly worth the strike price, is still in the red zone. Think about it. You have the right to sell something for 100 US dollar, which is worth 100 US dollar. But you have to pay something for having this option, that is the option premium. Now, if you have to pay the option premium, you would have still made a loss in this case. The situation in general when the strike equals the underlying price to recap is called at the money. Now you break even when the underlying price is low enough to compensate the option premium. In this example, the option premium is one US dollar. Then you break even at an underlying price of 99 US dollar. And every price above that is a potential loss. And every price above 100 is losing exactly the option premium, as you simply wouldn't exercise the option and lose the premium when the stock is worth more than the strike. The term for this would be the option is out of the money. Now, as we have covered both call and put options, let us take a look at a crucial concept that is the put call parity. It states that the call option premium minus the put option premium must be equivalent to the current stock price and the present value of the strike price. That is simply the strike price discounted at the risk-free rate to expiration. By the way, I'm showing how to calculate that in the coding part. So the put call parity establishes a relationship between prices of put and call options with the same strike price and expiry ensuring no arbitrage possibilities. Now, the most interesting question, how could an arbitrage look like if this equation is not net zero? Let's take a look at that. So let's say your call is worth $12. Your put is worth $11. Your current stock price is 100 US dollar and the present value of the strike is 98 US dollar. So this side of the equation would be one and this one would be two. Let's design the arbitrage strategy. So in this case, you would buy the call for 12 US dollar. You would sell the put receiving 11 US dollar. So you have a net cash flow of minus one US dollar. You would also short sell the stock for 100 US dollar. So simply borrowing it, selling it immediately and giving it back in the future. And you would also take 98 US dollar 
and invest it at the risk-free rate. For simplicity, I'm just assuming at expiry, the 98 US dollar are now worth 102 US dollar. You can calculate that uh, more detailed. Now, what is happening at expiry if you do that strategy? First scenario would be stock price is above 100 US dollar at expiry. In that case, the put expires worthless. You would exercise your call because you buy something for a cheaper price, which is now worth more. With that, you would cover your short sell. So finally, you would have 98 US dollar plus interest. So as I said, $102 per assumptions minus 100 US dollar for the short sale coverage minus the initial one US dollar you paid for both options. So you end up with a net profit of one US dollar. The second scenario would be the stock price is below 100 US dollar. In that case, the call expires worthless. The put will be exercised against you. As a recap, you sold the put. So you need to buy the stock for 100 US dollar, which you are, by the way, just using to cover your short sell then. And then you have the initial cash flow of minus one from buying and selling the options in the beginning. So in this case, you also end up with a profit of one US dollar. That means without taking any risks. So it does matter how the stock is ending up. You make a riskless profit of one US dollar if the put call parity wouldn't hold. Now let us move over to Python and code a put option as well as check if the put call parity would hold. Okay, so first things first, we need two libraries, math to make our lives easier and norm to get the CDF function. I've pulled up the Black Scores formula for European pot here. So let's go quickly over it. We got the strike price discounted for the risk free rate until expiry times the CDF of minus D2 minus the current price times the CDF of minus D1. Important, D1 and D2 are exactly the same as for the call option case. So you see, same definitions as before. I'm using the exact same assumptions we did in the last video. So we got a current stock price of 100. We got a risk free rate of 4%. We got a strike price of 100. We got a time to maturity of one month and we got a volatility of 25%. Just to recap, this is in years. This is in years. So this is an annualized volatility. This is an annualized risk free rate. So let's execute that. So we got all uh, assumptions here. Now this is from the last video where we are calculating a Black Scholes call option. So if I would call that option here on our parameters, I just mentioned I would get, and if I don't mess it up here with the variable names, of course, I would get the price of a call option. Nothing new until now. Now let's redesign this and it's straightforward because uh, as I just said, D1 and D2 is exactly the same. So we can just create a new function here, copy paste, call that BS put, have the exact same parameters here. So this can stay the same, this can stay the same and this can stay the same. The only thing which has to be amended is this part here. And we just need to rearrange terms here and just change some signs here. So what we can do is simply take this one, take it out. We have this one here. Then we change the signs here. So this one. With that, you have this part here. So strike discounted times CDF of minus D2. You got it here. CDF of minus D2 and then minus and then you can simply copy paste again from here and change the direction of the signs. So that is already it for the put option. So 
it's from the mathematical logic just rearranging terms here. So if we would execute that and change that to put here, we would get the put price here with these assumptions. So let's just sense check or double check that with an online option price calculator. So you see underlying exercise so strike 100 days until expiration, 30, 4% interest, 25% volatility. We got a put option value of 2.693 and we have 2.693 here. So everything is fine. Just for the call again, 3.021. 1, 3.0211. So congratulations, you can calculate call and put option values. Now, as promised, put call parity. Let's take this one and subtract the put value. And this value we are getting, so difference of call minus put has to be the same as we said in the put call parity example, then S, so S is the current stock price, minus strike price discounted. So we can just take math exp here for the E uh, um, Euler's value Euler's number times or, or to the power of R times T. So same as we are doing here. So this is simply what this is doing is simply doing exactly that. So this counting for the risk free rate until expiry. So current price minus the present value of the strike price. So that is exactly how, what this is is exactly the same as this. So the put call parity would hold here. And that's it for this video. There's a lot, lot more to cover on options. So if you're interested in options, you know what to do. I thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Bye bye.